I really don't mind playing video games that aren't fun. Having fun isn't necessarily the primary reason I play video games. But if a game isn't fun, I expect there to be some other motivating factor to pull me through the experience. I'm sorry to say that The Cub is not fun. I did not enjoy my time playing it. It has an incredibly promising opening act, but shortly thereafter, I just couldn't wait for it to end. But is there something else here besides fun that's worth experiencing? Without further ado, let's get into it. So, what exactly is The Cub? Have you played Limbo? Well, it's basically that. The Cub is a one-hit death, side-scrolling, narrative, platforming game developed by Demagogue Studios that follows The Cub, a boy raised by wolves on Earth after the world ended and the One Percenters fled to Mars, leaving the rest of humanity to die. Years later, humans return to Earth from Mars, now dubbed Martians, and realize that the titular Cub may be the cure for Earth's toxicity, and it's your job as the player to help the Cub to evade capture in a three to four hour trek through forests, cities, fields, and caves. First, let's start with the good stuff. The Cub is a gorgeous video game. Just look at any gameplay and you'll see for yourself. The parallaxing background vistas are often stunning, and the animation looks like it's been ripped straight out of a 90s Disney Renaissance film. And the bopping soundtrack is an inspired but often conflicting choice. The visuals sold me on the cut, and I'm sure anyone interested in this game is interested for that very same reason. The game makes one hell of an impression right out of the gate. Early on, the Cub puts on a Martian helmet, and for the rest of the experience, the player is tuned into a Martian radio station. This radio station was my personal favorite part of the game. It mixes up NPR-style nostalgic philosophizing with some banger music. Not every track is a hit, and some of it is downright weird, like a toddler Goo Goo Gaga EDM track that the DJ later comments is the result of late-stage capitalism and child labor. Uh, okay, sure. We'll get more into the social commentary aspect of the Cub soon enough. Beyond the traditional platforming actions like jumping, climbing, and pushing boxes, there are some more elaborate set pieces, like a minecart level ripped straight from Donkey Kong, some stealth sequences, and a few other surprises. They're all fine. There's nothing you haven't seen done before and done better by similar platforming games. The controls are just too imprecise to allow for that feeling of flow that makes other games in the genre so wonderful. This imprecision led to a few incredibly frustrating sequences where death didn't entirely feel like my fault. Some traps and enemy attacks aren't telegraphed well and require you to die in order to know where they are so you can duck or jump on your next attempt, and level exits are often obscured by strange overlapping scenery. While beautiful to witness, I never fully felt in control of the cut. Using very non-technical language, I just didn't like the feel of this game. Okay, so it's pretty and it sounds great, but it plays poorly. What else does it bring to the table? There are a ton of collectibles to find, hidden pretty obviously right off the beaten path. Collectibles take the forms of books, teddy bears, newspapers, and other relics from our dead civilization. After souring on the cub pretty quickly, I really hoped that the story here would make up for the gameplay, but unfortunately, that aspect is way worse. I can deal with subpar gameplay, but the narrative this game posits regarding its vision for the end of the world is a mess. Imagining all the ways our world could end is a simple task. A war for resources, global famine, man-made plague, global warming caused natural disasters, the list goes on. The cub throws tiny snippets of each of these possibilities at you, leaving you to piece together what might have happened on your own. Then, the cub decides to make it contemporary. We've got fake book and Google, Schmallmart, Schmapple, and Glamazon. I added those last three, but you get the point. The world building here isn't just lazy, it's deeply cynical. And when I say cynical, I do not mean it as an insult. I mean it as a definition. The Oxford English Dictionary defines a cynic as a person who does not believe that something good will happen, or that something is important. And that's what I got from the cub. Here's just one example. I knew I had to bring this box to the other side of the room to grab a collectible but I was hesitant to even do so because I knew whatever I'd find would just be trite and cynical. And sure enough, which made the boring act of dragging the box across the room even worse. Not only that, in order to proceed, I had to drag the box back across the room. None of this is enjoyable. It also doesn't say anything. It's just cynical. It's when you get to the collectibles that the cub really shows its hand. Yuval Noah Harari is a real-world author of three best-selling books, Sapiens, Homo Deus, and 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. In his latest book, the New York Times bestseller, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, Yuval Noah Harari, who has a doctorate in philosophy from Oxford, attempts to lay out the important questions humanity must face in the coming century, including discussions of climate change, big tech, AI, and the potential for global warfare. The cub, 
thinks this book is bullshit. Why? Because it's actually written by Hugo Noel Humperty. It's actually called 21 Lies for the 21st Century, and it's filled with, quote, misleading, overly simplistic, solution-free insights. So which insights are bullshit? Which are misleading? Nope, that's it. The book's bullshit because the cub says it's bullshit. So here's the thing. Pointing out all the flaws in humanity without providing solutions is fine, but the cub also appears to show contempt for others' attempts at solutions. This comes across as nihilistic, like everything shit and oh well, which would be an interesting viewpoint for a game to take, and I wish the game had committed to this viewpoint, but it doesn't. What commentary is here feels trite and banal. It all comes across like the cub thinks its own message isn't important, hence the feeling of cynicism. Near the end of the game, a song plays called TDGAF by Shane Berry. It's a beautiful song, but I couldn't believe what I was hearing, so I looked up the lyrics to confirm. And here they are. Like fireflies, bombs fly. Like moths, the irrelevant die. Co-isolated minds go insane, mind-numbing to alleviate pain. The weak, like waste forgotten, I guess we're all rotten. Surplus is our only lord, people are bought and sold. Three jobs for a living wage, zombies debate on the stage. We dream of getting rich, who will heal, who will teach? Who will sacrifice for justice? Hypocrisy is the only practice. We're about to disappear, thanks to YOLO and organized fear. I just want to say, they don't give a fuck. Do we give a fuck, my friend? The ocean mixed with oil, alchemic food on sick soil. I was once of a green age, now I'm bitter and enraged. Because the system is broken, and I'm heartbroken. I'd piece it together, but I don't know how. I just want to say, they don't give a fuck. Do we give a fuck, my friend? At one point in the cub, you find a banner asking, are games art? I mean, of course they are. I feel like that's a given in 2024, but whatever, I'll play along. So the cub is asking a philosophical question about the parameters of art, while also criticizing big tech as oligarchical utopians who will bring about the end of civilization. And then the game turns around and uses, at least to my eye, obvious AI art in their depictions of newspaper images decrying the end of the world. Kind of reminds me of a lyric from earlier, hypocrisy is the only practice. Maybe the developers are trying to comment on fake news by having in-game journalists use AI images to show just how fake corporate media can be. But when the cub also has you collecting a copy of Herman Melville's Moby Dick without changing his name to Schmerman Schmelville or providing any other obvious critique except for changing the eponymous whale from a sperm whale to a right whale, I have a really hard time drawing any through line between the cub's various ideas. Just what are you trying to say by giving us this TV clip as a collectible? Of all the places we meet here. Or this one. Young Weedle Man. I came through the time warp in the multiverse to help you fight Turbo Tornado. Where's the green flashlight? What are you doing here? Who invited him? Does any of this piece together? What does any of it mean? When I started trying to take the cub seriously as a piece of art to contemplate, as something of value beyond its mediocre gameplay, I started to realize the real message of this game is in the lyrics. I guess we're all rotten. Hypocrisy is the only practice. I'd piece it together, but I don't know how. I just want to say, they don't give a fuck. Do we give a fuck, my friend? No, the cub, you definitely didn't make me give a fuck, and I'm pretty sure you don't give a fuck either. I'm giving the cub a 4.3 out of 10. Thanks for watching. If you like this review, please like and subscribe.